All right, what the guan, y'all? Peace, like, share, subscribe, cash app, and we're going to get right into the bullshit with this news about Malcolm X's assassination. As you probably know, yeah, this new news, this new revelation, uh, Malcolm X's family reveals um, a letter they say shows the NYPD and the FBI assassination involvement. And I'll leave the link at the bottom. And the first thing I say when I see this headline is, duh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, who did? who doesn't know this? Who didn't know this? Obviously, the feds, you know, FBI, CIA, whoever's in the feds, they they responsible for Malcolm's death. So was the NYPD. But see, when this came out, there's another group that was also involved in Malcolm's death that for some reason when they read this, started doing backflips. And that's the NOI, the Nation of Islam. Because those are the three people or the, those are the three organizations that are involved with Malcolm's death. All three of them have blood in their hands. Let's read. And, you know, as I read through this, we're just going to be, I'm just going to be taking breaks to just make my point here. But I, I'm just, just on the Nation of Islam, let me just say this. They need to stop acting like like everybody in the black in black America or the black diaspora is going to go behind the elite. They 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 really got to get out, out of themselves. They they have this very cultish like mentality. And, and I'll explain as we go along, but the article. Family members of Malcolm X have revealed a, a letter written by a New York police officer that they that they say shows the NYPD and the FBI were behind the 1965 assassination of the famed black leader. The 2011 letter, by now dead officer Raymond A. Wood stated that Wood had been compelled by his supervisors at the New York Police Department to coax two members of Malcolm X's security team into committing crimes leading to the arrest. Listen to me here. Coax them to committing crimes leading to the arrest just a few days before the assassination. So basically, you know, these are two people who were there to, a couple of people who were there to protect Malcolm. The NYPD conspired to get them off the job to basically leave Malcolm exposed. All right, that's what's, what's basically what, what they're saying here. So two members of the security team leading to the arrest they were then unable to secure the entry to the New York's Audubon ballroom where Malcolm X had been speaking when he was killed. Malcolm X didn't fear being killed. I live like a man who's dead already. One thing about Malcolm, whatever, you know, and I've heard so many different reasons why some folks don't like Malcolm. Some people said he's a phony. Some people say, and I'm just telling you reasons. Some people say it's because He's he's not really black, believe it or not, that he's multiracial. I've heard that, which is dumb. Okay, compared when when given what how this man moved, all right. There's there's a number of different reasons why some folks didn't like Malcolm. Malcolm had balls of steel. If nothing else to, to, to respect this man for, he had balls of steel. He knew he knew he wasn't gonna make it to 40. All right, he was 36 when he died. He, he knew he was probably gonna that he he knew that night when he was gonna go make that speech. He was probably knew he was dead already. So, but he just moved like a man, was like whatever, you know. So maybe the 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 time on the streets as a youngster and the time in jail it hardened him. But he was just like whatever, you know. Whatever happens, happens. But it, it just, you know, when he said that he didn't fear being killed. I'm living like a man who's dead already. Who was who would who did he feel was gonna kill him? Who do you think he thought was gonna kill him? Now, some people may think that Malcolm was manipulated. He didn't know that, you know, he blamed the nation and it was really the government. He knew the government was after him. He said this on many occasions. 
we know the famous saying he said, well, you know, the way that these guys are moving behind me, uh, you know, this is a little bigger than the nation. And the nation, always, they, the nation just grabs on anything at this point. And we're going to get into them in a second. But he knew that who was following him, who was after him. He knew it wasn't just the nation. The point is the nation was involved. All right. Farrakhan did, as he admitted many times, basically poured gasoline on the fire. A man like Malcolm is worthy of death, he wrote in the paper. Elijah saying how, you know, that Allah is going to handle him or what have you. What did he mean already? But what really strikes me, though, they always said Malcolm was a traitor. All right. During Malcolm, basically, you know, you as you know, the story, Malcolm and and the nation broke off after 10 years and Malcolm you know after going to court Malcolm basically outed Elijah Muhammad and said Elijah Muhammad was banging out um underage girls all right and you can look at this a number of ways i mean first of all um obviously you know cuz Elijah copped it to it eventually but Malcolm was always called a traitor and a hypocrite Right? Why would he be a traitor and a hypocrite? Unless only two ways he could be a traitor and a hypocrite. He was in the nation for 10 years. Understand that. And Malcolm, at the end of the day, Malcolm was a street nigga. I mean, he, he was a street dude. He, yes, he, he changed and he became more righteous and he stopped being a pimp and a gang. But, but this is something that red is always going to be in him. You can't tell me that a guy who rose so quickly to the ranks in the nation, you know, who wasn't peeping game as to what, what Elijah Muhammad was doing. He didn't just find this out, I don't believe. I think he kind of knew. Elijah Muhammad, you got to understand, they saw him as God. They saw this guy as God. All right? And it's so, it, it is so laughable, you know, when you see Farrakhan Years after Malcolm's death, explain away Elijah Muhammad's picadillos, so to speak. I mean, there's, there's been many times when Farrakhan, and I'll leave a link to when he brought all of Elijah Muhammad's wives um, up to speak. And it was, this was just comical. When, you, when I look at it now, I'm like, oh my God. I don't know if this was done, um, I, it had to be during the movie because when when Spike Lee's movie came out, Farrakhan he started giving speeches and stuff and he started speaking about the movie and it was it was funny because he he had he brought out he he did the speech called Elijah is Vindicated. This was I believe in 1993 or 94 I believe that speech was. Vindicated from it's been since 65 Malcolm's passed. That is almost 30 years. You could you mean to tell me it took you that long? to semi-vindicate this dude and vindicate him of what? And if you remember the speech, and I don't know if this speech is on YouTube, if it is, I'll put in the link. The speech was basically, well, many prophets had to had a bunch of wives, but, but you preach in the nation that you should have just one wife. That now, because it's Elijah Muhammad, it's okay to have a bunch of wives, but you guys still have one wife. And I bring that up because in this one particular um, speech or meeting they had or whatever, I have the link in the description, dude brings up all his wives and and all his wives get up there and speak and all of them trash Malcolm. They call him a hypocrite. They call him, you know, they said that he was wrong and he was this and that, but it was his first wife. The first one he chose his wife, excuse me, and and I don't mean to diss, but you're you're the messenger's first wife. You're the well, not the first. He's the second wife actually. So he was married to Clara, but this was the other wife he chose, right? And and he, she told her how Elijah approached this woman. Clearly, it was one of his his teenage secretaries, I believe. But he was like, Allah is forcing my hand. 
That was what he told us when he said, I, I don't mean to do this, you sister, but Allah has forced my hand. I have to do this. So he, he snatching up this young chick and said, listen, Allah has forced me to do this. If you wanted other, could get more other wives, you could have gotten other people that were a little bit older. But to run that game and say, Allah forced my hand. I mean, come on, man. And then another woman comes up and then she says how Malcolm's a hypocrite and just all bashing him with, with Louis Farrakhan, who, by the way, a lot of these women, they mixed in with Farrakhan's family. So Farrakhan has his son or his daughter married to their to, to Elijah's kids to form a family. It's for I did, which I didn't even know because there's this one guy, um, his name I believe is Elijah Farrakhan. Elijah Farrakhan. He's this I guess this this weight um, this muscle um, this bodybuilder or whatever or fitness expert or whatever. Part he was part of the FOI. I always thought he was Farrakhan's grand. I guess he was. So he's Farrakhan's grandson and Elijah's grandson. You know, he look and he looks just like Farrakhan. I'm like, wait a minute, what is okay? Is that his grand? No, he's both of them. Elijah, I think it's Elijah Farrakhan. So Farrakhan is sitting there going through this spectacle, bringing up all of Elijah Muhammad's uh ex-wives, all of them trashing Malcolm, and he's standing there almost in delight, and then Farrakhan turns to the audience and says, don't you get another wife. Don't think that then that just because he had a bunch of wives, you can get another wife. I'm like, wait a minute. If this is if this is part of Islamic teaching, why not? And he's basically ordering them saying, look, you can't handle your own wife. How do you know? How do you know? This is where I respect the Hebrew Israelites because they have multiple wives. And they tell you it's okay to have a have multiple wives. Obviously, there's a process. Their thing is if you sleep with her, that's your wife. Okay, but they do believe you can have a multiple. They tell you from get. But here Farrakhan is showing you all of Elijah Muhammad's wives, all of them trashing Malcolm, all of them telling. I still can't get over that. Allah forced my hand. No, I mean your 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 little head for, forced your big head, and you just you just well, what is this? Come on, this is this is where the bullshit comes with the nation. And Farrakhan sitting there like whatever. And Farrakhan, well, we'll we'll get into him in a second. But yeah, how was Malcolm a traitor? Except unless Malcolm knew about this all along. How was he a hypocrite, as Elijah Muhammad's wives have said, unless Malcolm knew this for years and he just decided, you know what, I'm just going to blow up your spot now. I'm not going to protect you anymore. Crazy, man. But let, let's let's move on with the um, with the article. Malcolm feared being killed. He, I live like I'm a dead man already. Would, that's the officer, Maintain that the arrests were part of a conspiracy by the Nation of Islam and the FBI to murder Malcolm X, who had become disenfranchised, disenchanted with the Nation of Islam and left the black separatist group to start his own organization, the Muslim Mosque. Still trying to figure out how this guy was a traitor, but let's continue. I was a black New York City undercover police officer between May of 1964 and May of 1971, Woods' letter began. I participated in actions that in hindsight were deplorable and detrimental to my own black people. Under the direction of my handlers, I was told to encourage leaders and members of the civil rights groups to commit felonious acts. Okay. Woods said he was hired by the MPYPD to infiltrate the civil rights groups, not group, groups. So this wasn't just a Malcolm thing. To find evidence of criminal activity so the FBI could discredit and arrest its leaders. Then he goes down. He said that he threatened to resign, but that his supervisor said if he did, they would charge him with false crimes. His supervisors, Woods said, concocted an alleged plot to bomb the Statue of Liberty 
that implicated the members of Malcolm X security detail and led to the arrest. Okay, but and, and what I want to know, see, here's what hasn't come up. What did they have over Wood's head? Like in this movie, um, Judas, um, the Judas movie, we're talking about the Black Panthers. And by the way, I think the nation is drumming up all this this um, uproar because they want to kind of ride the wave of the Judas movie, which is very disingenuous to me. They're just trying to ride the wave of the Jewish the Judas movie and saying, hey, wait a minute. You know, there were infiltrators that that were out there that um, that basically exonerate the nation. No, but this this is this to me. That's just low rent. But um, yeah, in the Judas movie, notice the guy who was a Judas. He was a Judas because the police had something on dude. So they had something hanging over his head and they threatened him with major time. What did they have on this guy to force him to do what he did? That's what has not come up. That hasn't come up. So it says on the day of the assassination, Wood said his supervisors ordered him to be at the Audemars ballroom where he was identified by witnesses while leaving the scene. Khalid, Khalil Islam, also known as Thomas Johnson, was later arrested and wrongfully convicted to protect my cover and the secrets of the FBI and the NYPD, he said. The letter was presented at a news conference Saturday in New York by Malcolm X's three daughters and civil rights attorney, Benjamin Crump. Stop. So now, so wait a minute. So now Benjamin Crump has credibility? I, I mean, is this is this what we're doing now? Now, Crump is a credit is a credible lawyer for doing this? There's there's no well wait a minute Crump doesn't know what he's doing now all of a sudden. But but see, let, let's just if I may talk about Malcolm X's family, how his three daughters, and they mentioned that the well, let me just go on. It says a cousin of the wood of wood, Reggie Wood, joined them in revealing the letter's contents at the Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz Memorial an educational center on the site where Malcolm X, the site where the Autobahn Ballroom once stood. All right? Just a little something on Malcolm X's family. Look, they've been getting a lot of heat. People have been going after the daughters. Why are you aligning yourself with Farrakhan, the nation? Um, why haven't you called out the nation? Understand something about Malcolm and his family, whether it's, you know, his parents and even his immediate family. Malcolm has a very tragic bloodline. He's had a very tragic existence from his father getting killed as a youth by the KKK, his mother literally going crazy. Okay, him getting sent to Boston as a young age to basically grow up in the street life, become a pimp, go to jail, um, do all getting all types of shit as a youth, huh? Um, obviously, go to jail, uh, be being called Satan while he was in prison. So you can imagine some of the shit he was doing in prison. Comes out, obviously joins the nation, stays in there for a decade, and then as he leaves, um, you know, obviously breaks up with it with an ugly breakup for the nation, dies tragically in front of his his wife and kids. Um, one of the kids who witnesses it, Kobila, she basically goes crazy. She, um, years later, you know, she gets into some shit where she threatens uh, or she, I guess, she puts out a bounty on Farrakhan's head. All right. And why shouldn't she? Because she saw, she saw herself, the guys who killed her dad, which were Muslims, which were black Muslims. If the Nation of Islam didn't have any, anything to do with it, how come the other daughter, the oldest one, Atala, said she feared for her life for years that the Nation of Islam was going to kill her? If, if the nation had absolutely, she didn't see some, you know, Barney Fife, some guy in a cop uniform shoot Malcolm. She didn't see uh, some FBI agents shoot him. She saw Muslim, black Muslims shoot her father. 
That's what she saw at a young age to the point she's like, I didn't know if they were going to kill me next. So when Malcolm died and when the funeral was over, Betty Shabazz with six kids in tow, she had four kids and she was pregnant with two others. She had absolutely nothing to her name. Understand that. She had to, she had to cry on Percy Sutton's shoulder and said, listen, I don't have anything. I don't know where to go. To the point he had to, he and others had to help her get on her feet. And what she did as a single mother to six girls to go to eventually become the scholar that she did is amazing. But you mean to tell me that Elijah couldn't at least, I don't know, just send her a couple thousand dollars to get her on her feet? This is what I'm saying. Where was Malcolm? How was Malcolm this traitor to the point? What, did, did Malcolm um, give Elijah up to the feds? Traitor how? What, what? I mean, but you couldn't send out, I don't know, like $20,000 and say, listen, I'm sorry for your son. Damn, the, the, the mafia would, would do, do this type of shit and to, to, to people to keep them quiet. You couldn't do that for her? She had nothing. She had absolutely nothing. So it's interesting, just to stick with the family for a second, One, like I said, the Nation of Islam needs to, needs to stop acting like black people are, are idiots. There's this girl, um, there's this woman, you probably heard of her. Her name is Vicki Dillard. She works over with Boyce and Fly Nubian Queen. Um, this chick is a problem. She's a real problem. She She's one of these conspirator slash celebrity slash um and she's now with the NOI when because I remember when she first started years ago uh she was there Vicky uh Michi was there um they were all working on the boys since when boys was trying to get his channel up and running and eventually Michi broke off with them okay and uh it, it was a pretty ugly breakup and this chick, I remember Vicki Dillard, when she spoke, obviously, you, if you've seen her speak, she speaks like some female reverend or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she was speaking all the Christian um, verbiage. And eventually she switched over from being a Christian to being part of the nation. I guess she's like, a, I don't know, an honorary um, an honorary uh, NOI member or, F, or, or what do you call it, MG, MT member or whatever. What, whatever, whatever the female members are called, but she she speaks so much conspiracy celebrity bullshit. I just can't take it anymore, bro. And the reason she does it is because Boyce is aligned with these folks. He loves Farrakhan. He worked, Farrakhan is supposedly a grandfatherly figure to Boyce because Boyce, of course, didn't grow up with his father. So he's he's made Farrakhan his his um his grandfatherly figure, right? And so <laughs> so being that he's he wants to push out the NOI the NOI propaganda, she uses this chick. And this chick, her background is basically, you know, I think she's from North Carolina or Mississippi or wherever. Long story short, she got caught up in a mortgage scam and she did some, some federal time for it. She switched around that her mortgage scam was actually something where she was going up against government forces and she tried to turn herself into a political figure, a, a political prisoner, which was disgusting. And Michi X, when she left the Fly Nubian Queen, she eared all of that out, all of it out. Basically, this woman was doing a lot of shady shit with in, in mortgages and she went to federal prison for it. And she tried to flip it to say that she was actually a political prisoner, which was pretty disgusting. But when I see some things she does with the conspirator and the celebrity bullshit, I start to realize that 
she will go at to no ends to try to protect any type of celebrity and turn it into some sort of conspiracy. She had some, she did said something about Cosby one time, like this is a couple of, of uh, months back, where she tried to implicate that Michael Eric Dyson, who wrote a book, is Cosby right? Or, or, or did the middle class lose their mind? She tried to turn Cosby into some sort of, that, that Cosby's in trouble because of some sort of conspiracy. Not because Cosby doped and groped a couple of chicks. Not because this man has a lust for white women or lust for quaaludes and all that. No, it's because there was a conspiracy from the white man. This is the same Cosby, right? She, she, all of, she, this is the same Cosby who was sitting with Bill Clinton back in 1995, right after this cocksucker signed the crime bill. This is how conscious Cosby was. Right after they signed the crime bill, right, like a, a whole decade after this fool put out that propaganda piece called The Cosby Show, he's sitting with Bill Clinton after the, he signs the crime bill that sent hundreds of thousands of black men in jail. Then a decade later, this fool goes on a rant, the, the, the pound cake speech with Michael Eric Dyson, who is an attention whore himself, but he was dead on about Cosby. Now this chick who is turning around trying to protect Cosby, why? Because Bill Cosby gave a shout out to Boyce Watkins and Boyce Watkins from that point on started to protect dude. Clearly, my guess is that Cosby's paying Boyce Watkins to speak for him. And Boyce Watkins in turn is telling Vicki Dillard, go ahead and push out and try and, and protect this man. This is how, this, she also, she had another thing where she, another sheer where she talked about Kobe Bryant, trying to suggest that Kobe Bryant was killed by the NBA or by the white man. You think you thought that that Umar Johnson was crazy? This chick is is batshit crazy. This woman's out of her mind. She made a suggestion that Kobe Bryant was killed because he wanted to start a league in China. Folks, there is no league in China that is going to compete with the NBA. First of all. Kobe has no has, doesn't have the money to start a league. That's number one. But number two, who else is he gonna gonna go and and do business with but other white men? Yet this chick is so anti uh, white supremacy. Just today, she does something on Tiger Woods, suggesting that Tiger Woods that they conspired to crash, to, to put Tiger Woods in a crash and break his legs be, so that he won't win any more tournaments to beat Jack Nicholas. Oh my God. Tiger Woods, she, she doesn't mention that Tiger Woods has no back, that his career was over anyway. It's done. What is she talking about? This is the type of woman she is. She is a complete, nutcase. So this chick, after this news comes out about Malcolm X, all right, she brings on some dude from the nation called uh, Demetric Muhammad, all right? Demetric Muhammad is, I guess, a member of the Nation of Islam, and he wrote this book called, But Didn't You Kill Malcolm X? The answer is yes, okay? But that's the name of the book. And they started talking about, oh, well, See, you know the the nation of uh, the nation of Islam. They've been trying to slime us all these years, and blah blah blah, this and that, and the minister. Um, and and he, he here here are the three things that came out from this. They mention right. They mention Kabila, Malcolm X's daughter that tried to assassinate Malcolm X, assassinate Farrakhan. Right? Okay. They said. Basically, you know, they have a meeting or or let me go back for a second. It made it, it got it was on 2020 and they were talking about how, um, you know, Kabila tried to kill him 
and they she enlisted some dude i guess this fbi agent this jewish dude they had to throw in jewish there but whatever so she got in trouble with the feds percy sutton again comes in right and he tries to to basically help out the family and you know long story short eventually betty shabazz and minister farrakhan have a meeting at some church or whatever betty gets up and speaks all right and betty you know she's an educator she just says what she has to say then farrakhan comes up to speak farrakhan pulls throws the house down farrakhan talks about how you know basically breaks down how he did not kill malcolm x nobody said you killed malcolm x but here's what stood out during that speech farrakhan says and i have the link the link this speech is on is on um youtube i'll put it in the link but he says lying demons they know farrakhan had nothing to do with the murder of malcolm x and everybody gets the clapping and what have you but here's what he says during the speech after that he says i was manipulated this is what this man said i was manipulated now if you committed a crime, like let's say if you robbed a bank and years later, someone catches you from robbing, it has proof that you robbed a bank. Would you say, yes, I did it? Or would you say, I was, if you said something like I was manipulated, I was manipulated and robbed, you're just, you're basically admitting that you did something, that you had something to do with, with the murder of this dude. Well, I was, if, if you weren't manipulated, again, in 65, Matt, Louis Farrakhan was 32 years old, right? That's in 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71. In 1972, and I'll leave the link to that speech too, Farrakhan has a speech about Malcolm X. And of course, Elijah was still around. Elijah didn't pass until 1975. But in that speech, after writing in the newspaper that Malcolm was worthy of death, here he is seven years later, damn near 40. And he says, literally praising the people who killed Malcolm X. Now, I'm not going to go into the fact that Farrakhan was there in New Jersey, the same mocks where the killers came from, and he was there the day before Malcolm got killed. I'm not even going to get into that. But here he is seven years later, literally praising the killers of Malcolm X. Malcolm asked to die and he got killed. And you say, oh, well, that doesn't mean nothing. Okay. Explain why he would say, call Malcolm a traitor. 20 years later and saying that if Malcolm, and I'll leave that link in there too. Why in a speech would he say, if we want to take care of our traders as a nation, then why can't we do that? And that's none of your business. See, what you need to understand is that the nation of Islam cares about one thing. It's not about the black nation on a whole. It's about the nation of Islam. Many times people would say things like, you know, well, Farrakhan, you don't know what Farrakhan does. Farrakhan sends kids to school on his own dollar. He literally pays out of his own pocket for kids to school. I said, okay. Well, here's the, and I would say, oh, that's pretty nice. I said, I, I, when I heard that, but now when I hear something like that, ask them, okay, were those kids in any way involved with the nation? Because one thing, the nation, they're very autonomous, all right, as far as they, they never align with anyone unless it's his nation, it, it is it is nation uh, affiliated. Unless it's nation affiliated, they never align with anybody. And when you call them on it, it's like, brother, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't, brother, you, you, you're misinformed. And again, these guys are one, a great group great talkers. They got the gift of gab with these, go, these folks. But why is it? Ask them, well, okay, are these people affiliated with the nation? 
Because that seems to be all they care about. So if he, if he was manipulated, if he's saying he was manipulated, what does that mean? It simply means that you had something to do with the man's murder. But then Vicky, when speaking about this speech, right? She said, well, listen, family. Now watch this, watch this. She's always saying, well, watch this, watch this, family. Watch this. As if we're supposed to be, we're supposed to catch something that's gonna, gonna make our eyes light up or whatever. She talks about how the nation of Islam not only, um, not only tried to make peace with Kabila, they gave Malcolm Kabila $500,000, which is something I already knew. The nation did give them money. But understand, as I said before, early on, Malcolm X's family is a very tragic family that they've gone through a lot of problems. So when you sit down and you look at the family and you're like, why are they always, why are they aligning with the nation? Or, you know, why do they seem so forgiving? Did you ever think that maybe, maybe some people may have given them money to keep them silent? The Nation of Islam, when, when they talk about Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad's involvement or the nation's involvement, one of the things I've heard, and actually this was Nuri Muhammad who said this, on the Breakfast Club, he said how Malcolm was trying to get back with the nation. Well, and I don't mean to, you know, I'm not calling Malcolm this, I'm not calling Elijah this, but sometimes when, you know, it's almost like a pimp who basically has mind control over his workers. All right? And it's hard for that person to walk away. We're in a pimp hole uh, type of mentality. A lot of us, it's hard for us to walk away from our job, even though the job is pimping us to death. And this is something where the Nation of Islam was basically all this guy knew as far as structure was concerned. So yeah, he was probably was trying to go back to Muhammad. So again, the family... This is after, this is around the time where I'm sure, you know, they probably have money problems, all right? I mean, now did, she's looking at her daughter going to prison, to federal prison. So the nation decides to hit her off with some money. And then you see a Tyler um, Shabazz sit with, with, with Farrakhan during a 60 Minutes interview where Mike Wallace opens up the interview saying how three members of the Nation of Islam killed Malcolm. And then Farrakhan in that very interview talking about, yes, I have responsibility for what happened to Malcolm. So, so again, Malcolm, Farrakhan keeps, keeps admitting this. No one's saying that he, no one's going to come out and arrest Farrakhan right now. But the nation had a major hand in the man's death. And when you see Malcolm's family, um, you know, seeming to not attack the nation, I'm thinking that maybe this is probably what happened here. That they've probably been hitting the family off with money from time to time. It sounds slimy and it sounds pretty bad, but how could the family has to know, as I said before, the daughters basically the ones who were there in the ballroom, they know that the nation had something to do with it. If you want to say that Farrakhan had nothing to do with it, he didn't, okay, he didn't pull the trigger. Clearly, his hands are just as bloody. But let's go on now. Sunday, I'm back to the article. Sunday marked the 56th anniversary of the assassination. At her daily briefing, White House Press Secretary Jen Posky was asked about the revelation of the letter. And I just, what, who, what does the White, the White House doesn't care about Malcolm, please. I have not seen that letter, she said, but if you want to provide it to us, I'm happy to have the right person look to it after the brief, briefing, please. They don't care about Malcolm. What, what, what do they care? Anyway, 
Early last year, Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance announced that his office will review the convictions of the two Nation of Islam members who were held responsible in Malcolm X's killing. One of the men who confessed to the killing, Muhajid Abdul Halim, a.k.a. Talmadge Hayer, or Thomas Hagen, has maintained since his 1966 trial that the, that the other two nation members, Islam and Muhammad Aziz, a.k.a. Norman Butler, were innocent. Halim served 45 years in prison before he was paroled in 2010. Islam, paroled in 1987, died in 2009. Aziz, 83, was paroled in 1985. The Innocence Project, along with the attorney David B. Shaney's, are fighting to clear Islam and Aziz's names. A 2020 documentary series on Netflix, Who Killed Malcolm X? and efforts by the Innocence Project prompted Vance to review whether to reopen the case. And I would really strongly recommend uh, Who Killed Malcolm X. It was the guy from um, the guy from New Jersey who, who hit him with that fatal blow. James something, but yeah. Okay, he's a member of the nation, by the way. But after Saturday's news conference, Vance office, Vance's office released a statement saying that its review of this matter is active and ongoing. In a separate statement, the NYPD and it and it has provided all available records relevant to the case to the district attorney. The department remains committed to assist with that review in any way. The FBI has declined to comment. The assassination of Malcolm X has long been a subject of fascination to historians and activists given the acrimony between the Nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X after the break with the group. Okay? Um, it, it's kind of funny because just to talk about that breakup as I stop here for a second. Um, another thing that Vicky and that dude from the nation were talking about, they were talking about how Malcolm, um, you know, after Malcolm got, it was bombed out of his house. Dude was, dude was homeless. Malcolm had nothing but the drawers and, and his, the, the coat in his back. That's basically what Mal Malcolm had nothing. They bombed his whole house. With his kids in it, by the way, they, you seem to forget that. It's funny, they, <laughs> you, you, they, the, the nation, and, and I'm just gonna mention them because they're the ones who, who've, um, they're the faces in this whole thing. I'm gonna get to other, other members. I'm gonna get to Colin as well. All right, but you throwing bombs in where his kids are at. I mean, at least even the mafia is like, yo, you know, don't hurt the women and the kids. Just go after this guy. Nah, you just, that, that is wild shit right there. But let's just go, the, the, Vicky and this dude from the nation, they're sitting here talking about um, Malcolm accused, accused uh, Elijah Muhammad of having a bunch of wives. And then after Malcolm didn't get his house back, then he said they were, they were underage women. And then this guy was trying to say that, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, you the the prophet in the Bible, and he said, and he tried to use some biblical uh, case that the Bible says that there are prophets who've had many wives. Yeah, but you never taught that though. You never taught that. So what are you saying? And then you got Farrakhan bringing up all of his wives to to go after Malcolm, and. <laughs> And with with Elijah saying that that to to the first woman who he chose as a wife, along with Cle you know after Cleary, he started choosing these women to be his wives. These are the young secretaries telling these women that that Allah has forced his hand. Come on, bro. This is what this is what I mean. The nation they they try to make it out like we're dumb, but wouldn't it make it more stable if you organize it to the point where one man has a bunch of wives? There are people who do that. So Elijah can have a bunch of wives, but all of you in the nation can't. You can't have a bunch of wives to help you like in, in the in the Hebrew Israelites, 
a lot of their wives work and they support their men while they're out there in the streets. Now we can talk about how these men, they should get jobs or whatever, but that's what they do from what I understand. And now, and you got Farrakhan saying, no, you guys can't have another wife. What are you talking about? So this, this is what I mean with, with the nonsense that, that they pour here, man. It says, according to witnesses, the Audubon Ballroom in on February 21st, 1995, a man rushed forward and shot Malcolm once in the chest with a sawed-off shotgun. That was a James character. As two other men also charged the stage firing semi-automatic handguns. Malcolm X was pronounced dead that afternoon. Shortly after arriving at the hospital, Malcolm X's widow said she believed the current Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, a protege of Malcolm X, was involved in her husband's assassination. And in two, December 4th, 1964, issue of Muhammad Speaks, the organization newspaper Farrakhan wrote, the die is set and Malcolm shall not escape. Such a man is worthy of death. Everybody knows about this article, but but again, this was this was 64. But then seven years later, you give a speech literally praising the killers of Malcolm X. And then 20 years later, you pretty much do the same thing. So, and and this is not something, this is not something new. Well, this is this was done then, but this is something that didn't stop with Malcolm, all right? I'm not going to accuse Farrakhan of, you know, killing Malcolm or Khalid, <laughs> okay? Because Khalid, see, what, what happens is once you move away from the cultish uh, mentality of the nation, they discard you. They discard you. Malcolm, Malcolm, under Malcolm, under the 10 years that Malcolm was there, the nation grew by leaps and bounds. And then when Khalid took Malcolm's place, the nation started growing. Khalid really appealed to the youth. Just think of all the 90s rappers and so on. Khalid was the one who brought them in. And this is why I 100% believe that when Farrakhan's gone, the nation's going to be gone. And what's so, so, it's funny because the people who killed Malcolm, I mean, you had, if you watch that, that, that Netflix special, Who Killed Malcolm X, the guy who killed him, right, with the sawed off shotgun, this dude was still walking around. Well, guess what? Colin Muhammad, there was an assassination attempt, attempt on his life back in the 90s by a guy by the name of James X. I think his name was James Best. Don't you know that this cocksucker got a YouTube channel now? The guy who shot Kyle, who nearly killed him. And again, <laughs> they shot Malcolm in front of his kids. They tried to kill Kyle in front of his son. For those of you who criticize his son now, just think of, of somebody running up to your pops and trying to kill him. And his, and his son... Farah Muhammad said, daddy, daddy, daddy. And they had to grab him and get him out of there. But this is the nation. This you in front of kids. I'm not going to say, I don't know who sent this dude. I don't know what happened with that. But this piece of shit has a YouTube channel now. I'll leave the link to his YouTube channel. Listen, Nate, listen, listen, look. And let me finish the reading this. After confessing at length to his cousin, Raymond Wood wrote the letter believing he would die soon. Reggie Wood said at the news conference that on the advice of Crump, he planned to publish a short memoir of his cousin's confessions, which covered other matters as well. I am aging and in failing health. Recently, I learned about the death of Thomas Johnson and I'm deeply concerned that with my death, his family will not be able to exonerate him. Raymond Wood wrote in a 2011 letter, it is my hope that this information is received with the understanding that I have carried in these secrets with a heavy heart and remorsely regret my participation in this matter. Crumb 
called the Onvance's office to launch a full reinvestigation of Malcolm X's assassination. Who more personified the Black Liberation Movement in America in 1965 than the civil rights icon Malcolm X, Crump said in a, in a news conference. The FBI was trying to stop another Black Messiah. Let me stop right there. I'm tired of hearing that term. I'm tired of hearing the term Black Messiah. We don't need a Black Messiah, folks. You need to unite. You, you, don't, you don't need to get behind some dude. I think that right there is killing us. Waiting for somebody. Obviously, you know, whatever Black... You, you're looking at this Jesus character who they try to show is perfect. Jesus wasn't perfect, all right? But to think that Farrakhan or Elijah or Umar, or you name the person, Marcus, whoever it is, Malcolm, there is no black Messiah, all right? Knowing what you know, know about the nation now, you're gonna follow behind them at this point? And, and let me let me just finish this for a second. But, the, but this black Messiah, let's stop. Another black Messiah from uniting African-Americans. This was orchestrated, and the only way we can get justice, restorative justice, or otherwise is with the truth. Look, understand, Louis Farrakhan, right? Nobody's accusing this dude of pulling the trigger, all right? But this dude did fan the flames. And I know a lot of people are going to get triggered because you love the nation and you grew up with them. Louis Farrakhan was, whether you want to admit it or not, a very grandfatherly figure to a lot of black men coming up. The Nation of Islam helped mold a lot of black men and the five percenters. The reason why that is more of an indictment of the black church, because the black church is always teaching weakness and, and submissiveness and, and all these things in the nation, they seem to go more harder. But what you've I've learned is, and what a lot of people have learned the nation is doing it not for black people on the whole, but for the nation. That's the difference. And they've always been this way. Always. All right? And there's a very cultish-like attitude with these dudes. All right? Which is why, which I guess explains why they would join forces with Scientology of all groups. Whoever thought the nation would join with science, and again, Farrakhan is, would, would go up and he'd give the speech and say, no, 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 it's not what you think, it's not what you think. I, I don't want to hear it, bro. Scientology, the founder was racist, did not like black people. And then you push clowns like Riza Islam to try to push it down our throat. I'll say this, Malcolm X, Malcolm X helped to expand the nation to new heights, all right? He was a great lieutenant. So was Khalid. Without Khalid, the nation would not have the appeal of the rappers and the entertainers. And he, especially during that time with the 90s rap, Khalid was the one who helped build that up. But let me tell you this. Riza Islam is neither of them. Ben X is not going to do that. First of all, Ben X is too dark. Yeah. Nation of Islam are a bunch of light brights. You talk about color struck. It just, it is what it is. They're color struck. I knew back then Khalid was not going to be, going to, going to lead no nation. And eventually he was going to break off. He just came too hard. And, and let's just keep it a buck. I mean, Farrakhan, like I said, with me even, it's hard for me just knowing how he contributed to my youth. It is, it, it was hard for me to really um, criticize this dude, but there are really too many cracks showing with this, bro, this dude. I'm not going to, I don't, I'm not throwing away everything the nation has, has done, because I'm sure they've done some good things, but the blacks as black folk as a whole aren't obligated to follow these dudes. We're just not. And 
let's just keep it real. Farrakhan has been saying a lot of strange things lately. Strange to the point of suspect. All right? Whether it's it's his bizarre speech that he gave weeks after um, Aretha Franklin's funeral, where he's talking about all sorts of, you know, just weirdo, just, you know, gay shit. I'm just going to keep it a black. Listen to the speech itself. I'm like, bro, this is just, this is just off. Or when, or when he said, he talks about witnessing babies getting raped. Yeah, he said that. This is, this is like a couple of years ago. This just really weird. Or how about his interview with Don Lemon, a recent one. Now, I know that he's been uh, fighting colon cancer over the years. I get it. He's been fighting it probably for over you know 30 years or so. He's always had cancer, whatever. I need to hear, you know, you go through a 20-minute diatribe of the effects of what the colon cancer is doing to you, where you, you know, where you, you leak out. I mean, it's just, hey, look, I didn't need to hear that. Just a lot of weirdo shit has been coming out of this guy's mouth. He's still a great speaker. He's still inspiring. But this idea that we're obligated to follow him, all right, and maybe I'm late on this, but but he is starting to live long enough to become the villain. A lot of these dudes are. Him, Al Sharpton, already, forget him, all right? A lot of these dudes, they've just been leading us down, down the road like, you know, why were we following them to begin with? And this is stuff that I've heard about Farrakhan as far as him being, you know, um, people have called him Farrakhan and the the charmer and everything. And obviously coming up, I didn't really want to believe it because I thought he was inspiring. Now I'm looking at the nation with a more critical eye, man. And y'all got to stop getting triggered by fools like, like Vicki Dillard and Boyce Watkins and all of the people who just worship... Um, just worship figureheads. That's all. The nation just, they, they can't come out now and say, oh, we had nothing to do with it. You had everything to do with Malcolm's death. You, the feds, and the NYPD. It is what it is. So I'll leave the links in the bottom. You know, y'all, I think this is all I got to say on it. Uh, you know, like, share, subscribe. You know, think with a critical eye, man, and um, Cash App as well. Peace and big up on yourself.